whoa, whoa. <laughs> I forgot that I put the camera here and not there. So I'm like, hold on, how do I look? Okay. I'm so busy trying to think of how I was going to say hello. <laughs> Immediately threw me off. I've got nothing. Hi, guys. That's fine. It's, it's okay. I'm just, I can't find my own camera because I, I changed it. I'm in the new perspective. I don't know what this is. Yeah, it's good actually. I like the. I, mean, I was considering whether or not it looked any different, but actually, I think it, it's just like it's just like it's it's just better. I think it's good. Okay. Uh, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? Oh yeah, that bit. Yes. <laughs> I've made, I made too much of the meal of this now. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That is Lily Kay. That's dream. <laughs> okay. That's dream. There he is. Okay. There he is. <laughs> Way too far. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that that what the fuck was out more than a minute into our podcast because otherwise you're gonna have to edit that. Out. <laughs> Who cares? That's fine. I just Not beep so. myself and like beep, and that's it. But then any time after that is fine. Okay, I think it it was a minute in. So yeah, I think so. we should be fine. Um. So, uh, we are changing into a bi-weekly. Bi-monthly, because bi-weekly technically means two twice a week. I, I do this to myself a lot. It's bi-monthly. We're doing two a month now. Yes, that's the one. That's what We I'm started off for. doing two a week, went down to one a week, and now we're doing two a month. <laughs> Look, it's... it's we're busy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, there's too many things to do. And we don't I have a full-time job. Lily has about four full-time jobs, despite the fact that she doesn't get paid for half of them. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's all good. So, but we, we are not leaving. That's, that's the important leaving. part. We're just taking it back a little bit because we're busy. Yes. yes. And every week we're like, what if we do it on Monday? And then he goes, no, I'm busy on Monday. Or I go, I'm actually busy on this day, though. <laughs> and then we both go, for fuck's sake. Yes. Just flip the table. Um, but yeah, we, I think it's going to work with this one. And then, you know, we, we, we still have, well, I still have uh, interviews <coughs> lined up, hopefully. It's going to happen soon-ish. Uh, but uh, all in due time. I think we're both hoping to entice Desmond to come back to us. Yes, Desmond. <laughs> Desmond, Desmond, come back. When are you free? Desmond. <laughs> we want to chat. We want to chat with you. When your new show comes out, that's fine as well. ASMR. Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Anyway. I don't like ASMR. It doesn't do anything for me. It kind of creeps me out. Why? Why did you say that? <laughs> because it's... Did you... Did you stop? <laughs> I think I explained myself very well, actually. <laughs> Uh, but yes, Desmond, come back, please. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. We love you. We miss you. Um, but uh, before we get into today's uh, topic, since we haven't it's been talked a while. in a while, it's been a like, while. It, like, been a while like this, uh, what did you watch in the last two weeks? Okay, so I haven't really been watching a whole lot of stuff. I've, I've the past couple of days I've been catching up on Critical Role. That's been my big thing mm. because I was about four episodes behind for a while and it was only ended up staying four episodes behind because they did an entire mini series that i also didn't watch <laughs> so um I, but i'm i'm caught up now i'm caught up and as you know catching up on critical role is a is a uh, uh it's kind of has to be a whole effort thing because episodes are about four hours long usually three start and three and a half to four hours yeah um so I'm caught up now, and now I'm going back through and watching that mini series I was talking about, which was called Xander and Limited Calamity. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm watching that now. Okay. But beyond that, did I watch anything else? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> since did we you? last spoke. I don't think so, because I was telling you, I haven't had a chance to go to the cinema since I saw Thor. It's been like well over a month. I just haven't gone. Yeah. Thought about going at the weekend, and then I decided to um, not go anywhere and do nothing. Fair. And I've very glad for that but yeah so i've already been home it's true i have i did rewatch at least half of this again <laughs> like not long after i finished it i haven't gone back and like finished that bit yet but and then obviously as we'll get into they 
just went ahead and dropped a surprise whole other episode yes. on Friday, which made me kind of happy that we didn't do this last week. Because <laughs> now we get to talk about all of it together. Yes. Um, but I think that's kind of it, to be honest. I've been very boring. No, you've just been busy. And busy, that's true. It's, you know, it, it happens. Life happens. I watched a lot of things because <laughs> I've been depressed. So, <laughs> <laughs> So I've been literally just, you know, I've been uh, serotonin. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I needed them. I needed it, and it was, it was good that I, I actually. Well, I didn't really have the time for it, but I uh, took the time for it. I'm, I'm glad that you took the time to do something just for fun. Yes, I need. As it. you should. I needed it. Um, so I watched. I, I went to the cinema twice actually. Twice. At least taking all my cinema time. <laughs> yes. uh, I I went and watched Nope, uh, which is the new, new Jordan Peele movie, and it's really really good. It's not as good as Get Out, but I am always amazed that he's getting so close, like so close to that with every with with us, and now with Nope as well. But Get Out is just a fucking masterpiece. So I don't very... think he's gonna top that. <laughs> the thing about Get Out. To me was that yes it's a very good movie obviously but i watched it well after all the hype died down and kind of heard everything about it so not a whole no. lot of it was particularly surprising to me no. because everybody had talked about it to death so i kind of i was able to enjoy it on like a on a on a hmm. filmmaking scale where i was like oh this is yeah this is a good movie but any of the suspense that i probably would have gotten going into it blind was kind of taken out for me but i also haven't had the chance to see us well i have, I have i've had the chance i just haven't watched us yet i have it on dvd I literally have it sitting still in the plastic on my oh, windowsill no. um i just haven't sat down to watch it yet and then i and i've been very conscious about trying to stay away from pretty much anything to do with nope because i do want to go into that as blind as possible not that variety were particularly helpful about that the day it came out in america <laughs> immediately posting like a spoiler uh, in the headline and was like you have to stop doing this you have to, yeah. to stop doing this it's just come out yeah yeah they are not not great about them but uh, yeah i'm i'm interested to see how i feel about these movies that that, that i i mean i don't i don't know nearly as much about us as i did about get out when i watched get out mm. if that sentence made any sense it may okay cool um so I, I'm interested to see how coming into it with less knowledge affects the viewing experience, as I am always interested in this sort of thing because I find that to be fascinating. <laughs> fair, fair. I, I won't say anything about it. I appreciate that. The only thing I will say is that you must watch it. Like <laughs> it, it should be on the must watch list. <laughs> It's it's definitely like of there's two things I really want to go to the cinema to see at the moment. And I think it's both the movies you've seen in the past couple of weeks because it's Nope and it's Bullet Train. I really want to go see Bullet Train. I already talked about Bullet Train. I you do already talk, yes, but yes, yeah. I watched uh, because on Sunday I went with my friend uh, to watch when the crow that sing. And, oh, uh, really good. It was really good. But okay, I have like, of... really mixed things about yeah. it. I I think the critics just don't like it. Like. It's it's always it's always the critics, uh, but those who read the books and uh, you know the general audience is just raving about it. My friend was crying the entire time. I like, don't actually know what it's about. Like I don't really. I, I've seen that it's Daisy Edgar Jones. Is that her name? Yeah, yeah. Um, and if she looks very ethereal in a lot of the the things in the poster and all that sort of stuff. I don't know what the genre is. I don't know what the story. Is. It's a <laughs> thriller slash okay. drama uh, okay. and it's very good i i need to read the book now I'm, I'm on that train as well like you know i already got bullet train here it just arrived so i will read the bullet train i've heard well. that the movie was made to be a lot funnier than the book yes i would like to put that in your head before you go into reading it expecting it to be a comedy <laughs> i know i know i know i was like i'm, I'm prepared i'm prepared I, I i prepared myself even though i don't know why i'm bored in, because i have a full bookcase <laughs> that I need many to... books that I've bought you that I you know, still haven't read I, know. I need to get back to reading I just but that being said I still haven't read the second um king king killer king, king killer, killer. Yeah. I, I I get the the different 
titles mixed up in my head and I have to kind of make sure I'm saying the right one. Why can't can't I, haven't, I haven't read the second one yet because the first one took me so I know. <laughs> Look, those are long books, so I they're, understand. They're not only long, they're dense. <laughs> they are, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Patrick Rotus is not messing around. <laughs> so many words. <laughs> I know, I know. And it's it's small words as well. Like, mm, it's dense. I mean, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I watched those two in the cinema, and then um, I, I, my my Korea brain is just turned on now, and uh, I found the new, I found a new one, and it's brilliant, and it's I'm gonna say it's like this is us, but just so much better. <laughs> like, uh, okay. just, whoosh, this is us, like like this. So I highly recommend it to those who love this is us because it's. It's again a masterclass of how to tell a story about your characters, uh, and not you know like like the story is driven by the characters and whatnot. And it's beautiful. It's called Our Blues, uh, and it's a Netflix. Our Blues. Yes. Okay. And it's a Netflix original uh, series. It's twenty episodes. Um, each episode uh, showcases um, uh, different people from the same island, the Jeju Island. Uh, and their life and and how they struggle with love and friendships and and you know just general things and it it beautifully it, it I just uh, went through the episode uh, about depression and it's it made me cry I cried my eyes out I fucking cried my eyes out it was beautifully done beautifully done uh, so yeah that's uh, I'm still watching it so I haven't finished it yet it's still in progress but it's really really good so I highly recommend it. And then, and then, uh, what what else did I want? I it, watched... it, it's you've taken a, it's you've taken a pause on Black Sails for the I moment, did. haven't you? I did, yeah. Yeah, I can tell. Cause I feel it was sitting the, the not that it, you've obviously take your time, do what you like. I'm not pressuring you, like to watch it really, really quickly. Um, I'm pressuring I, you a little bit to watch it, but like, <laughs> it's not one of those shows that I can watch quickly. Like, I understand. It's, it's, I did. It, I took my time with it as well, actually. And I'm, you know, me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Um, it it reminds me so much of Spartacus, and I watched that literally like in three weeks or, or four or something. And I I now regret that because it needed it, time. <laughs> it, it's one of the you do need to sit with it for a bit just yeah. to like kind of figure out how you feel about certain things and then go okay now I can kind of move on with this yeah so I I felt like I I needed I needed a pause from it so I understand I put it on pause but I didn't forget about it it's here uh once I finish this beautiful series I'm, I'm going back and I'm watching it uh but yeah that's it I think that's it I, I it? did watch a little bit of Shit's Creek again because they just announced down every to join uh, yeah and I can't wait I was so happy but once I was like, you were actually the person to uh, yes. break that news to me. I hadn't seen it at all. Because most of the time when you send me news, I've, I've heard about it already. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, what? <laughs> I'm he so looks proud so of myself. cozy and cute. He's so nice. I love it. So I can't yes. wait. Now I'm even more excited for sex education. Right. And mm. that made me watch uh, a little bit of Sheets Creek again, because it's awesome. Yeah. And I needed a Blu-ray, and I can't find it. And that's very annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, we don't need to. Yeah, next time, another time. Anyway, we did watch something. Um, we shared an experience, uh, which I was familiar with previously because Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite uh, writers and authors. Um, but uh, I was a hundred percent sure that you're gonna love Sandman, and I was right. I'm glad yeah. to report uh, that I was completely I, right. <laughs> I had an inkling when I like heard it that it was like I. I it was one of those things that you obviously there were people have been talking about Sandman on and off for years. It's one of those ones that I've just sort of like known the existence of, but never really bothered looking into. Mostly because people, it's like, oh, it's a graphic novel, and I'm not particularly into comics. And I think we've been very well established. Mm. I, I was aware of it in the culture, but I hadn't really gone looking for it. And then there was all the talk about the fact that they were making a TV show. And then it was kind of popping up a little bit on the Netflix geek stuff. And I've kind of been like, okay, I don't really, again, still don't know, know anything about what this thing is about other than it's called The Sandman and people seem to really, really, really adore it. Then the trailer finally came out. 
and I watched the trailer and I went, ah, this does seem like it would be my thing. But I made a very conscious effort to kind of not go any further than that. Mm. So, um, but I did watch the little, they did that Netflix geek, like, um, panel, like half an hour thing, where they talked to the cast and they kind of got everything excited. And I sat there going, you're showing me posters. I can see the release date on the poster. <laughs> And they were like, ooh, when will the release date be? And I'm like, it's on, it's on the posters you're showing me. <laughs> anyway, that's that was just me, you know. Um, <laughs> but it released on the day we were coming back from holiday. Uh-huh. And I was kind of, I, I wanted to leave it a little bit because we ended up getting back at about four in the morning on Saturday. And uh, so Saturday I was like, I could watch it, but I'm not really quite in the mood yet left it decided to stick it on on sunday and watch the entire thing in one go <laughs> literally didn't stop pretty much the entire had the curtain down sat on the sofa i i adore it i don't know if it's been obvious from the way i've been tweeting for the last two weeks i think it's pretty I, obvious i really really love it. i'm not surprised it's fucking brilliant like it's so good <laughs> You know, that's it's especially you know, the, like, you know, I had this big boy because this mm-hmm. is just the first one. Uh the first omnibus. Like it's it's this big, by the way. Lily bought me these for my birthday. These are the first three volumes. So these two are our first season and this will be later. Possibly. <laughs> Mm. I don't the I believe the, the idea is that they want to adapt literally everything, right? But that's the idea, yeah. They they've they've pretty um and loudly proclaimed, I couldn't think of the words I was going for there, uh, that they want to do literally all of it. Um, so the hope would be to do everything that's, that is in there. Yeah, um, it's all up to Netflix at this point. If they're going to pick it up. <laughs> literally shaking please. We'll find out, we'll find out soon enough. They <gasps> need like a month, and they game and just literally tweeted about it, like, calm down, they need a month to decide. So we don't really end. Very thankful for the fact that Neil Gaiman is is just so like kind That's of great. calmly not like not nonchalant, but like free with the information about how these things work. It, it yeah. makes it's nice. I also just love the fact that he's just on Tumblr. <laughs> Look, he's great. Like, Tumblr is a place where nobody cares about celebrities. It's not a it's not a clout based platform. Yeah, but also Neil Gaiman is there. <laughs> And he just answers questions all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's and it's really cool. nice. It's very cool. He's, I'm, I'm doing his masterclass now. Uh, and it's fucking... Like, this guy is just so fucking smart. It's unreal. He knows. He, he gets story. It's really... just He really understands what yeah. storytelling is about. Yeah. I mean, one of your favorite movie that, movies is uh, from it's him. Stardust. Yeah. It's Stardust. Trippy, I don't know how involved... I, I believe, I don't, I've never read the book Stardust. So I, I, and I know that there is a lot of... There's difference between yes. the book and the movie. But he, uh, loves, he loves the movie. So. I love the movie. <laughs> he was very proud of the movie. Uh, but, you know, he's just great. Like, I love his stories. I love how he writes. And Sandman was a big thing for me when I was, like, 14. I think that's when I got it. it. That seems to be a big thing for a lot of people. It's yeah. around that age. It, 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 it was a lot of people kind of pick it up and kind of become very attached to it. It's one of those uh, properties that I understand very, very much. You know, it's, it's one of those ones that just becomes absolute, like, not only is it comfort food, it's like, no, 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 this is, this is a part of me. It's yes. so important, yes. that kind of thing. It's that, it's that, that kind. And then I lend it to someone and I never seen it again. Never do that. <laughs> never again. I was like, that was my lesson. Learned. Never, never with anything that important to somebody you don't like, aren't like seeing all the time no you know? never again never again so but uh i am very happy but be- because of the show they reprinted them so i had it now so i was like i saw it it's it's very expensive <laughs> but like oh god a lot of them yeah it ran for a while oh yeah yeah yeah. there's there's a lot of sandman and it's all brilliant uh and then you know i just saw it and i was like okay yeah i don't care I'm just buying it Coming home with me. <laughs> I literally sent you a picture. I was like, eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm guessing it. It's like, please, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so okay. Happy. I need to reread the, the, the comics because it's been a while. I, I just remember fucking loving the 
entire thing like you know it's been it's been a part of me like dream and everything and then it's like dream okay dream really is that character yeah <laughs> like we've talked a little bit in recent episodes about the things that we like uh stuff he's like so <laughs> he's so made <laughs> for me to just adore and i do i do very much <laughs> Oh, just I love him so much. That excellent casting. He's okay. Yeah, okay. Big thing about well, part of the reason the show is so good is that, like, even though I haven't actually read through these yet, the casting is so phenomenal that, that you can't fault any of it. It's incredible. Yeah, it's literally flawless. Like it's, you know, all of them are. Just, everybody's like, amazing. But well done, like especially, um, you know, it's gonna happen. Freaking Gwendolyn and Christie as Lucifer. I was like, damn right, she's the fucking queen. Yes, she's so funny. I, and I fucking love her so much. She's so funny. Look, she was my favorite character, one of my favorite characters in Game of Thrones, Queen of Thought. And I was so happy when they announced her for this one because honestly, after Game of Thrones, like Star Wars, seriously, you, they did you a bad. Could, you, they, they did a dirty. Seriously, like you, you had her there, and then you just gonna waste her. Like, wasted what? Uh, they wasted everybody. Let's be real. That's fair. That's fair. But like, come on, like her, especially. I was like, I was so yeah. frustrated with that. Like, fuck off. <laughs> her, John Boyega, two of the major people got absolutely yes. shafted by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, when they announced the casting for Sandman, I was like, okay, so she's there. Who's she gonna play? And then they were like, Lucifer I was like, okay, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to know anything else. That's all I needed to know. Like, okay. I, I kind of, yeah, I kept up with the casting and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. <laughs> but like, there were, it was, yeah, there were like some people I was like, oh yeah, neat. I, I know this person and all that sort of stuff. Again, it was, it was when they released that trailer. I think it was the one that they dropped just before Geek Week or during Geek Week. I just kind of went, okay, interested not going to let myself get very obsessive about this until after and then obviously i watched it and then it's like now now i can let myself go full brain rot and i have you have <laughs> have i i love him it's it's so good uh what was your favorite thing about him though that's what i need to know oh my god you know i've been thinking about this a lot and i've been trying to unpack because that's what I do. I like to unpack these things. I like to figure out exactly the meat of what it is about these things that I actually like this much. Because sometimes it, it, I think it's more interesting and it, it teaches you more about yourself in order to like really examine these things. Like why, why does this resonate? And I could talk about the fact that it's kind of a story about stories, which is part of the reason I love Black Sail so much. That kind of thing. I honestly don't know. I think it's everything. <laughs> That's like the whole thing works. Like it, it, everything about it is so expertly crafted. The writing is incredible. The casting is amazing. All the acting is gorgeous. It looks visually stunning. And it's one of the places I have been thinking a little bit like, like Cowboy Bebop should have been better than it was. You know, that's where my brain's at at the moment. Cause like, I don't know what the budgets were like between those two shows, but Cowboy Bebop feels like it should have had more there was more money there and they didn't use it well like it was like you kind of watched it and was like this looks cheap what did you do yeah. here yeah this you can feel just how impressive every single craftsperson was on this all the set designers uh, uh fucking gaffers the cinematographers the directors everybody production design is so amazing uh -huh. <laughs> just it they it, it scratches that part of my brain that goes, oh my god, it's just pretty. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I can't really express in a way that is um, intellectual and smart. That's fine. We don't have how to much, be intellectual. <laughs> how much, but I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not going to happen, Katie, okay? <laughs> yeah, and to be, it, but like, I, we're doing a podcast, I have to do more than just yeah. Because this will just be another half an hour of me just going, he's so good though. <laughs> that's enough. I think that's all they need to know. It's very good. <laughs> Kate is yelling about it. So. I just want to, it's like, ah. 
I got like there was I literally was it's like to the point where I was looking at a gift from episode two today when he's collecting the things for the fates from the dreams mm -hmm. and it's just that bit where he goes to like, get the snake and he uses his coat to like catch it and it's just it's just I don't know the movement of him is incredible he's so graceful uh, th uh my that might be one of my favorite things about it is like I mean he's he's yeah like, I mean everybody's perfect but he really is just like everything is so thought out Mm -hmm. And you can tell, like I could tell from the moment it came on, it was like every movement had intention behind it. Yeah. It was like I, I, there is something about incredibly graceful people, um, uh, in watching them because I get it with dancers as well. If there's somebody is a particularly like captivating dancer, I, it, there's just something about it that makes me sit up and pay attention and just want to want to like record it into my eyeballs so much mm -hmm. that I can just keep seeing it, that kind of thing. Um, but it, the intention of him like and he spends that entire first episode stuck in a ball yeah you know but he does so much and he doesn't say anything i mean you've got the narration yes that's the word voiceover was what i was kind of going for but i couldn't remember voiceover <laughs> either but uh like he does like all you're getting from him is is just like him sitting there and just looking at people but he's like a painting yeah it's incredible it is, it is. That was gonna... one thing that annoyed me, actually. Like, oh my god. That's like There's the a criticism? <laughs> there is. Uh, I first thought that my TV was broken because their faces were elongated. Like... It, there, yeah, the, the, there is a lot of very long lenses yeah. used. Yeah. And it, he, he, it only, and I think that's intentional because he needs to look a little bit inhuman. Yes, that, that's what I figured as well. But at first mm -hmm. I was like, my TV's broken. <laughs> So, and Jesus I, Christ, it, what did I, what did I push? Like, you know, <laughs> oh my god, that would usually be something that would annoy me because they did. I do, funnily enough, they did something similar in Cowboy Bebop where they kept using these really long lenses, so things started looking fisheye. But it didn't work, and you're just sitting there like, why does this look shit? Yeah, and it is. It's it's effective. It is that yeah, like yeah. Once I realized that, oh, mm. so it's intentional. Okay, yeah. Like I need a warning sign next time. <laughs> Because I got scared. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, it's just a five year old TV. It needs to work. <laughs> so, yeah, that was like, that's my only criticism. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I think I like the fact that we were, be able, we're going to be able to go through this and not be like, actually, this thing annoyed me and this thing annoyed me because I think yeah. we do that a lot. And as much as I like being able to take about something and be like, why does this annoy me though? It's, I think it's also very nice to be able to, that we can do this and be like, it's fucking excellent. <laughs> All of it. It is. It truly really is. It's just, you know, everything was handled so beautifully. Like, I literally recognized scenes from the comics. I was just, as we were starting, flicking through this, and when I was like, oh, I recognize that, I recognize that. And I, like, literally from the first page, I was like, oh, it's like, it's the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, I think it really stands to show that having your creator be that heavily involved. Yeah, when the material is that good let's put it that way um because there are other things where the creator is a bit too involved and actually it's gotten worse yes. uh, it happens it's like but letting neil gaiman touch his own property like properties i think is important and he should do that more with pretty much anything he wanted they want to make <laughs> you know i just love the fact that he spent his entire time during good uh, good omens learning how to make good tv like you know he was involved in everything he he did everything around the set and and he just wanted to do it just to learn how to make it excellent and then i was like oh i mean i always love him so you yeah, know i think that <laughs> is the thing about him that makes his work special is that he does yeah. he does the work he does, he does the, work. the work into understanding why the thing works yes like, he, he understands the ins and outs of the thing in order to make it something that is worth watching or reading or uh just being involved in um i because like i mean pardon me i read the i've not really read that many neil game books i read um i read neverwhere and i really i did really like neverwhere and i started reading american gods there's something about his prose that doesn't always stick with me mm -hmm. and it's not because it's bad it's just like it's a, it's a style thing but anything on television he's done i've loved I mean, I think that should be evident from the fact that my username on most things is 
a quote from an episode of Doctor Who that he did. <laughs> and it's I'm up there as one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes, generally yeah. speaking, outside of like the 10 era, which is, you know, obviously <laughs> up there. Um, like that, it, uh, um, Doctor's Wife is 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 one of those episodes that I, I, I watched at the time and adored, mm. and I still adore. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it, and obviously, you know, obviously, Good Omens was amazing, and I need to go back and watch that again so I can appreciate it more. Season two is coming, baby. It is, and it's been partly written by John Finnemore, which for me is yeah. very exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, uh, it's the, the I, I don't know. I actually haven't looked into how many because we've got the showrunner is named Alan Heinberg. Mm. I don't. How much of it do you know that he wrote? of the scripts or is he just like involved in the sort of crafting showrunnery sort of that side of producery things i don't know because i haven't looked into this at all uh, i think he was writing because it feels like but yeah, also it definitely feels like him mm. it definitely feels like him i don't know but how I... much he was involved in, in that but uh i have a very good guess that he was very much involved with the writing as well i wonder if he was like part of like the sort of yeah, he's the, I would well. almost say say like editing process, you know, in that the, in that like somebody else writes it, and he comes in and kind of gives his teleplay sort of take on things and, and do yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Okay, teleplay that makes yeah, 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 yeah all right. Bye, so yeah, it's, all right. It's so he fair. did he did do some like yeah. in the, yeah. oh, you can, you can, you can he, tell yeah he he won he wanted to be involved with this like yeah you know, I it's... you can tell I I knew that he was like deeply involved but i think the way that he gets involved in things is slightly different to the way that i think some other people would get involved in the yeah, show, yeah, yeah. in the like material yeah um uh and i think he's more like interwoven in it in, in a way that like a lot of other like, authors don't get the chance to be mm -hmm. um which i think is disappointing in a, in a lot of ways not all authors obviously can write screenplay yeah it's a different craft <laughs> <laughs> it is a different craft um but i think that the it, being able to be involved in like the creative process and that and it's quite a bit part of what i kind of want to be able to do in television anyway is to be able to be in that process of being in the room where somebody writes something and then you go okay let me just go through this and it's the, it's the editing process that i like i did with you i like being able to go through and be like okay well this is working in lots of ways over here but it's not quite mm hitting in the ways that you wanted to over here so we why don't we go through and we can like adjust this here and here and then we hopefully can get to like this point that we want to get to that makes me very happy and i feel like that's more of the sort of role that he gets to be in this space yeah um which is i think the way to go especially with him yeah. oh yeah. yeah yeah definitely because he understands but yeah he, he truly took the time to understand how he works differently uh from from a book mm. and, and how to do it and, and i think he just proved then you know if you put work into it you can do it and he did it mm. so um very proud <laughs> one of the things that has been talked about a lot and i think we'll, we can get into the actual spoilery stuff soon yeah. um uh but one of the things that has been talked about a lot is the fact that there hasn't been a whole lot done to it in order to update it for the modern day, it's kind of inherently incredibly progressive, um, which is really nice to see. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things that um, actually that's 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 marked now as the point where we're going to start getting into like story based uh, spoiler stuff because we've gone a good half an hour without making any spoilers. <laughs> so, you're welcome, friends. Go watch it if you haven't at this point because we do really want a series too. We want to start it and finish it and watch the entire thing maybe twice. Um, uh, one of the things I really liked about this is that, uh, I'm going, and, and I'm going to speak to specifically to the most recent episode that dropped, this, the, the secret episode that they decided to give us uh, with a couple of like one-off stories. Calliope is a story about abuse in inherently, I should probably say at this point also, content warnings because we're going to talk about some slightly harder topics because that's what calliope is it's a very difficult episode in a lot of ways but what i liked a lot about that episode was that um calliope is a like yeah she's abused she gets raped in it you never see anything to do with that mm. 
And I kind of realized in that moment that like, it's not, it's so, it's like, we, I think we're fed this lie by a lot of creators that that is necessary in order to tell the story properly. Mm-hmm. And it so wasn't, like, we didn't need to see it. You got the sense of it anyway. Literally, it goes from him, like, bubbling up over this thing that he's thinking about doing, and like, clearly on the precipice of, like, turning over, and you know where it's going. He knocks on the door. And then it just cuts back to him at his desk and he's got a scratch on his face. And it's like, oh, I know what happened here. Yeah. But I didn't need to see that. And you didn't need to debase the poor woman in order to get the sense of what happened. And they did a similar thing in in, in The Sound of Her Wings, which is episode six, which to me is my favorite episode. And I think is a lot of people's favorite episodes of the entire of the of the series. Um, in the when she goes to take the baby. Um mm-hmm. and you don't you don't hear the mother scream. You don't get to hear, you don't hear that part because it's like, we don't, we, that's not what we're here. We're not here to make you hollow or like feel despair in that kind of way. We're just telling you a story and we've given you all the things you need to understand about the moment. And then we're just going to move on because mm-hmm. the impact is still there. It just doesn't need to be so in your face about it. Right. And I really appreciated the fact that, that this show went to the lengths it did to be so careful yeah. about the subject matter it was handling and it it warmed me to know that a lot of that stuff didn't change that much from the comics i know that it does happen that you do see things in the comics when it comes to the calliope story mm-hmm. but it, it's a different it, like it's a different medium and it's yeah. it's it, it's been 30 years since a lot of this stuff we don't need to see all of it because we we've seen thousands of versions of that mm. and i think it's important to note that uh, Calliope, the Calliope part of the episode was directed by a woman. Yeah. Uh, and I think partly written by a woman. If um, I, uh, Louise Hopper was, Hooper mm-hmm. was the, um, Louise, Louise Hopper, I believe, is Tom Hopper's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Louise Hooper was the director of, of Calliope. And um, I think she did a fantastic job yeah. and of that. But that was one of the big things I really, really, really loved about just the way they handled everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts beyond what I've said? <laughs> no, I agree. Add. I agree. I just, you know, I'm just nodding along because same. <laughs> mm. Like literally, you know, I, I spend it's it's difficult for me to talk about uh Sand Man in a way because I spent my childhood being obsessed over it. And right. you know, I, I had I actually had a friend who was on the same level of obsession as I was. So literally we, we got the comic and then we were like, oh my God. And then just talked about it for like hours. Like, oh my God, did you, what did you think of the, the... So I'm like, I'm just, you know, I'm just living the dream of finally <laughs> seeing one of my favorite comics ever created on the screen and being fucking fantastic. Like so well handled on every level, story-wise, character-wise, uh, casting, directing everything is just like you know like the 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 picturesque uh, nature of it of, of everything is like it's just a random screenshot from from episode four yeah and look at it it's, it's gorgeous it's gorgeous. <laughs> so gorgeous. It's gorgeous so i'm just like i was i was literally just sitting there uh i didn't even binge watch it because i wanted to enjoy it like you know one by one so like not at the end because i was like i need to see <laughs> <laughs> I got obsessed and I was like, I need to watch it now. Um, especially after episode five, which is my favorite episode, 24-7. Fucking masterpiece. Like yeah. that was that I'm I don't think it's a surprise. That's also my favorite part in the comics as well. <laughs> like Oh, it kind of speaks to a question I was gonna ask you as somebody who who uh grew up with it and kind of loved it that much, was what was the most gratifying for you what like what episode was the most gratifying for you in watching it and so i take it was 24 7 okay mm. makes, makes, makes sense makes sense like, makes sense. like when it came when it started i was like hold on <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> i didn't do my favorite one like i i nearly cried just from the start i was like it's my it's my episode it's gonna be my episode and they did it so fucking well I was so I, proud. Like, so I, I love the episode. I really, really do. I think I need to watch it. Like I've seen it twice now. Yeah. I still feel like I need to watch it at least like 
like a couple more times because I feel like I don't quite not everything hits correctly for me yet in that way of like I'm still trying to understand it mm-hmm. but in a way that's that's good like in a like a I, I need to unpack this some more because I'm like that something I like and maybe it's just a, a case of like literally my sensibilities for, versus what it's it's showing you in the thing or that just don't line up in any way shape or form which is fine mm-hmm. and, and, and it's, as it, sometimes that's that's the way it should be with a piece of you know art yeah, yeah. um I'm I'm still trying to understand it properly. Yeah. Um, I but just I, like the it, idea behind it. What if we wouldn't lie? Sure. Yeah. It's like brilliant. I can yeah I can see. It's it's that thing of like, I, on a fundamental level, don't believe that that's what people would be like if we stopped lying to each other. Or more. Accurately, I don't believe in the concept of no lies would equal supposedly like a better world. Like that is like a fundamental. But but that's exactly the point. Yeah, and 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 I think we you're gonna get to that space by the end of it as well. But like it's um. I, that, that's that's yeah. why I love it. Like that's exactly the point of it. Like it doesn't mean that it's gonna get better. It can actually turn into freaking chaos. And I think it's so beautifully. Uh, showcased in that diner, uh, like oh god, the comic. Oh, I, th- I love that comic so much. <laughs> like, you can you, actually, you might maybe you'll be able to explain something to me then, because I still don't quite understand. Because the thing that where it, it it I get confused, I guess. Okay. Uh, and again, it's not a criticism. It's literally just me not not quite being able to to understand the intention behind the moment. Mm-hmm. Is we go from this place of like I get, um. I can't remember all the names. Um, the husband mm-hmm. and and the the guy who's interviewing for the job. Mm-hmm. I get that moment of like that's like jealousy and still feeling like you own something and all that sort of stuff. And 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 he's like, oh, you wanted to, you killed him because you wanted to kill him. I was like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> Where do we get from there to everybody suddenly like self-flagellating? Right? It's the it was it was from. I understood her burning the pages because that was like kind of like burning a lie. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, why is she banging a nail into his hand? Uh, the, the, that's where I start getting a bit confused. <laughs> Can you explain it to me? I will. I will say this. I don't want to explain it because okay, I think it's different. You want me to try and figure it out? <laughs> I think it's different for everyone in a way. Uh, why it's happening like that and uh i think once you get into the comics and actually read that part you think it makes more sense that way mm-hmm. okay that's fine yeah so that's i I'm, I, I appreciate that i appreciate that as an answer I, I will i will put it like that because i i remember for me like i i think that's my most read comic run basically uh i think i've read it like 50 or 60 times at least uh and that was the first thing i opened up to when i got this one <laughs> this big boy uh and then it came on on episode five and i was like i was thrilled and i i still genuinely think like the one thing for me is that it's it leaves you with you know your your own thoughts as well it's it's i i literally after that i didn't watch the uh, death episode the next one it, just, it, I I thought was it was like, like you you kind of wanted it was just so funny to me because i i think uh neil actually talked about it a lot where he was like we go so dark with this episode but we do that because we give you uh-huh. the sound of her wings afterwards it's yeah. like we it's, and it's like because it's like if you if you feel like you can't quite go on after that one it's like no no, no push through because you get the better you get the hope and the the beautifulness of of life and the and, and living and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um. Afterwards, which I think is um, and it actually speaks to something we've talked about a, quite a lot when we've talked about horror. In that, I I feel very strongly about the idea that needs to be kind of a sense of aftercare. Yeah. Kind of built into horror. Yeah. Because I think that horror that leaves you, like that goes so depraved and then just goes lol and then just kind of leaves i think i think that that's not good for a reviewer 
Like, I think it does that. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's, I, 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 I feel like that's almost, um, what's the, it's not insensitive. That's not what the word I'm looking for. Um, no, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Like, not, no, it's, it's not, um, responsible storytelling. Um, especially as it, the best horror tend, is something that's meant to show you something about, mm. You know, as it like with sci fi, it's something that's meant to show you something, an aspect of humanity and all that sort of stuff, right? It's meant to help you understand something. I think that's what good art should do in all sorts of forms. So if it's just there to just be like nasty, I don't really see the point in it. Yeah. Um, but I think I like the fact that they, they've, it was like, it's such an intentional sort of like A and B um, thing. Uh, like he's a really awful nasty, like depraved episode but like not to the point where it like i like the fact that that episode is just really like low level unsettling for the entire thing mm -hmm. until it kind of goes a bit like you know like okay yeah so this was going, <laughs> was going. um but then yeah, and, and then it gets into the sound of her wings which i i cried at like and, oh, and yeah. we, i think we get we you cry at the drop of the hat but sometimes it takes me it it does take me a lot to be able to like really be brought into something to feel like I've been moved in that way um and it was like I one of the I wasn't expecting that episode to almost be like two episodes in one because mm -hmm. I knew about the, everybody was talking about the introduction of death and how much I really really liked death and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff I had I didn't know anything about Hob Gadling that was all new to me. I had no idea that that was also going to be the entire other half of the episode. I was like, oh yeah. God, we're like in an entire other story going on right now. Uh, um, I like that. Uh, and I like that in the comics as well, because, you know, it's always like when it comes to people who are immortal and they like for a thousand years, they always get tired of life. And I love that he's not, he's like, it's, it's honestly, are you kidding I think me? maybe my favorite thing about this, because like, <laughs> I think the story of the immortal who's bored of living and doesn't want to live anymore and all that stuff, it's so done. Like, we've done it. So we understand. Like, it, and I'm not against the concept of, like, showing of that there is something... Um, like, The Good Place does a really good job of that in in, it, in showing that it's, like, uh, the reason we can enjoy all of these things is because we know that there's an end to it. And I do agree with that. And I don't think that, that this disagrees with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what's really amazing about it is that he's like, well, I'm not done yet, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm still learning things and things are still changing and I'm still I'm still getting to experience new things and even though I've had the worst century of my life yeah. <laughs> everything's so terrible I've got so much to live for I'm like I love that like I love that so much it's so good so good I love that are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> I've got so much to live for <laughs> yeah you know I, I think it's just you know it's 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 just so so good so good to see that you know it's not always just the bad stuff like you know he has the bad stuff as well like literally he has a whole freaking centuries of bad stuff like i haven't eaten properly in 80 years and yeah. christ alive <laughs> you know you don't you don't know how hunger feels like when you're immortal and i'm like oh god i don't want to know <laughs> no thank you uh but uh yeah and then he just wants to keep living just and you're like he wants to see what more there is out there and i think I think that it's shown so nicely because I think it, because it starts in such an early place. Yeah, he he gets to witness um, progress. Yeah, uh, in all sorts of forms, in terms of like technology, in terms of like all these sorts of things. I like the fact that you see him go to quite a depraved place because everybody else is doing it, and it's like the only time Dream really gives him any real advice where, uh, where he's like, "Oh yeah," they they then they you know drop off these uh, slaves and all this sort of stuff. He's like. Yeah, don't do that. I love that. And I like the fact that he immediately one. took it to heart and it yeah. was clearly, it was like somebody who is still learning. Yeah. Even after all this time, that he could be swept up in the sense of like, oh, everybody else is doing so I must be able to do it. And it's like, yeah, that's sell you're selling people though. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, mm, okay. Yes. You know what? You might be right. And you just see it on his and face, change, and it's like I, it's so it, there is a, an immutable. I don't. That's maybe not the word I'm looking for, but like there is, he's he just changes in a way that feels incredibly human. The whole yeah. episode is incredibly human. It is. Yeah. The whole show is incredibly human. It's cutlery's. I like it so much. Fair. 
that's fair. That's a fair point. Uh, I just love the fact that he finds him. He's like, sorry, I'm late. Don't like. I hear it's impolite to keep one's friends waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so dead. beautiful. I'm dead. I died. That's that's what I was I like. You know what's really funny? I wasn't expecting to see. Um, and I feel like maybe I should have, considering the nature of it, it's, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people who ship Dream and Hob, like, as, like, like they're like, oh, this, there's no, they're, like, they're the kind of like, oh, this is, there's no heterosexual re re um, explanation for this. I'm like, really? Because this just felt like two people who cared about each other to yeah. me. I'm not against it. No. I can see where you're going. But, like, it really surprised me just how much people were like, oh, these two are in love. I'm like. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but probably not in the same way that you're saying it, yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, and I think that it can work in either way if you want it to. But I think what's so beautiful about it is that this is a this is a friendship. Um, mm -hmm. And part of the reason it's, you know, it's in that same way that the, the reason you like Shawshank Redemption so much is like that it that this is a really pure and, and, and genuine love on a friendship platonic yeah. level. Yeah, that's why I love it. No surprises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No surprises. That's just a, you know. Uh, I'm just getting used to the fact that no matter what the show is anymore, there's always going to be people who's who's just going to ship people, and I'm just like, okay, do your thing. I'm not against people who ship people. They're like they. Just, I just it's it's. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I just, just do it. Let's so just it's put it this way. Like. <laughs> the, the only thing I don't like is is if one, someone wants to do it like this is a fact. And yeah, I'm right, no, and that, I'm I like, think that's that's that. I think we're both in agreement on that yeah, one. Like, yeah. um, like, no, just people can just, do what they like, but they yeah. can, I do understand that, you know, this is, it's not, it's interpretation, it's not fact. Yes. <laughs> that's um, it. That's all we ask. Thank you. Uh, but yes. Um, I think I want to, because I want to still want to talk about some more of the specifics. Um, uh, I do want to give one very specific shout out to uh, Tom Sturridge's voice. Um, <laughs> just because, oh, like, the episode starts and you're like, that's what he sounds like? The second he started talking, like, I, I can't <laughs> explain it, but I think this is how I imagined him, like how he would sound it's, like. That's it, it's part of it. It really ties into that thing of like perfect casting. It's like you look at it, you, you look at the black boxes with the white writing and little squiggles all around them. It's like yeah, that's what that sounds like, and it's like how is it? How is it so correct? <laughs> it's it's completely correct. I I can't explain it, but like it was like hearing what i imagined <laughs> what dreams should sound like yeah yeah and i was like it's so perfect uh like literally the moment the episode started i actually had, i think it took me a couple of lines in for me to go wait that's a dream i had to stop it i was like it's oh it's it's fucking stunning um <laughs> it's just like uh, so beautiful to listen to do you have you have you had the the dreamcast so they released a little thing just before the show came out called the Sandman Dreamcast Experience, which is literally like it's about half an hour long, and it's like little these little like five minute interstitials of like Neil Gaiman. There's one from Tom Sturridge's Dream, like mm. as the characters guiding you through dreaming, and it's um, really really lovely. I have listened it, yeah. to it. It's it's just a little audio experience. Oh, it I've is. put okay. it I've put it on just to like sleep. Okay, <laughs> it's really nice. I will, it starts I will with Neil, who's kind of introducing you to the dreaming, and then it goes into dream. And I think there's one from Lucien's perspective. Mm. Uh, I haven't gotten any further than Lucien because I'm usually asleep by that. Okay. I think there's one from Lucien's perspective. I think there's one of Cain and Abel telling a story. Nice. And then I think the last one is Desire. Oh. And I want to go into Desire because I think I've told you I've got a real now like love, like deep love for Mason Alexander Park now. I think they're brilliant. Yeah. Um, uh, and I kind of adore them. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. They're so good. It's, it's just, once again, perfect, perfect casting. Perfect casting. And I love the fact that that came from like Neil Gaiman sitting down day one, looking at dailies, and then Mason being like, Have you, is Desire popping up in this first series? And um, are you looking for people? Yeah. Like that's literally how they got cast. And it's like, <laughs> perfect. Well, I love it. Just Don't change a thing. Just about that. That's how I should do it. I literally should just, you know, who should I be? Just go up, just sell it to them. <laughs> That's it. 
yeah i i i've loved the hearing new game and tell the story of how they found tom starge because he was like the third name on a list of, yeah. of names like the first round down and then they watched like uh, like one thousand more and then he goes it's still tom we yeah. still want tom <laughs> it's like it's, him. it's literally like wedding and dress shopping for some girls yeah and, you know they're gonna try enough you thousand just know dresses and you just know like you know you, you're still gonna leave and just gonna be like yeah i want to try or more why you had it it was there right you know i can't even count how many girls coming back and they're you know, like yeah okay. no it was that one and it i think so i one. think you do need that uh, it, it, yeah. sometimes though to be yeah. able to be like to be so sure because otherwise sometimes you'll you'll always guess but having over another like another 1500 or more auditions and being like it's still him <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 it's like okay i mean come on perfect guessing and I think it's because you can tell that they did that with everybody. Yeah. Like you can tell they took that care with everybody. Boyd Holbrook as the Corinthian is incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Boyd is just he's just so good in general in, in so many things that he does, like even that god awful predator. Uh the predator. Uh fucking awful. He was great in it. Uh so I was I was really thrilled. When they announced him, I was you like, should. Uh, mm, um, I because yes. I've, I've watched a fair few interviews now because um, again, everybody's so delightful. Tom Sturridge is like kind of the almost the opposite of dream. Yeah, in, yeah. Oh, in yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. He's so yeah. bubbly he's, and he's like sweet. Bubbly. Yeah, I, I I think he's uh, the sweetest, and he'll never see this because he doesn't work go on the internet. But I love you. <laughs> That's um, great. uh, yeah, it's it, hearing him talk about. Uh, how like captivated he was by what just watching him uh, mm. Boyd work on set and being like, yeah, this makes sense. He's very seductive. Yeah, and that's what a nightmare is. It has to kind of lead you in so that you can be trapped by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the teeth worked way too well. <laughs> so disturbing. Like ooh. every time I looked at it, I was like, it's so odd because it's like it works. I don't. It, it it's it, it works on one well enough a level where it's like yeah of course he's got teeth for eyes but also you're like hang on he's got teeth for eyes <laughs> first i didn't like i i remember reading the comics as well and i was like hold on let's take a look back what <laughs> it's like that perfect dream logic where you you, you don't really question it until you do yeah. yeah uh or it's like yes of course this is a horrifying thing hang on <laughs> so I'm, okay yes uh but yeah no I, I i think genuinely everyone was just fucking great i for a second well a good second uh lucienne i thought that was cynthia Arrivo. i was i think i can see what you mean but yeah for, Vivian, for second, Adjim, I like, i've I, i've also fallen cynthia? kind of deeply in love with her as well i think she's wonderful oh she's great she's great um, but i really had to like scroll my mind and be woman. like Okay, um, no, 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 you're not her, but you're still fucking great. <laughs> like, just awesome. Lucien. Also, what a wonderful name. Lucien. Lucien. I like the way he says it as well. It's yeah. just... We can do it. He there's can. something, there's something very warming about it. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just. <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's it's just today's episode. It's just ah oh my god. Ah, that's so that's how I've been feeling for like the past two three weeks. I just I'm like please no. I need to understand that everything about this scratches my brain in exactly the way like I want it to. You know. Again, completely fair. <laughs> like it's just you know it's completely fair. Uh, when I was, yeah, I was still like I was going to talk about like like the, the really specific stuff in it because I feel like we haven't actually gone into like any of the plot things properly i don't think we, we need to to be I, yeah i know what you mean but like i, I, like, I still want to be like that's really good that's really good i love stephen fry of course is oh, the perfect embodiment of a beautiful field with a waterfall and lots of lovely flowers so, he's so beautiful. wonderful <laughs> so beautiful like i can just imagine that's that's stephen fry yes that's I that makes sense didn't see that coming by the way uh, when it when, when it when they revealed that I was like wait what that's so cute <laughs> I was so delighted I was like what <laughs> it just like did not even anywhere close to I mean obviously the thing with desire um being 
uh, and and the the stuff with Unity and all that and the and through, I you kind of see that coming because when you meet when you Unity talks about how she met a man with golden eyes in her dream, it's immediately like, excuse me, <laughs> like that. So that that wasn't that wasn't a surprise, but, but yeah. you know, I don't Gilbert think it, being, it, it was meant to be a surprise. To be fair, yeah, yeah. But 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 Gilbert being Fiddler's Green, genuinely, I was like, wait, <laughs> yeah, yes. I loved that whole sequence of him. <laughs> yeah. The serial convention is so funny to me. Like that, that of all the like the dad jokes you could possibly ever tell me, I don't think it will ever beat somebody being like, it's a serial convention, but they're serial killer. Like that shit is hilarious. It's just the best thing. Oh God, Katie, I just remember. I don't know. I have so many good jokes for you. Oh no, I was, that was not an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I knew you wanted to. <laughs> oh, wait, because I was talking specifically about that whole this, the whole sequence of him it's going funny. into the various different um, convention rooms where they're having all these things, and it's just like somebody posted it, that gif of the woman with like all of the maths like um, equations going around, and just being like. And it's like that's just him that entire sequence <laughs> like hang on a second <laughs> which is like you know, a reasonable response I, it's, it's thing, just right? it, it's delightful <laughs> it's like, excuse me hang on something what? feels off here <laughs> what, what are you talking about uh very good just you know all i think we would all feel that way um <laughs> uh i love uh galt uh because i know that that's quite that's an addition um the whole story with Galt mm. uh, wanting to become a dream instead of a nightmare. Yes. I loved that. Yeah. Um, I thought that was incredibly sweet. And it was. Um, uh, it was a very nice way to show the change that has become a dream um, over the course of this this century. Um, and I just also, one of my favourite small moments, because a lot of this is just me like picking out little things mm. that I really, really liked. Just Jed appearing in his little like superhero costume and being like, I'm the Sandman, and him delightfully being like, You're the Sandman. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just so full of like delight. It really is. It, that's the only word I can use to describe it. Because he doesn't smile very much, but no. he's so expressive in yeah. that moment. Yeah. yeah Love yeah. that. So good. So good. Uh, uh, I can never say his name properly. David Chulis? 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 I, I was just thinking about that because I honestly I was looking at it written down. I was thinking I got, I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I think it's have... I think it's is it is it with an A or an E? Because I would almost e, be attempted to call it Thorless if it was with an A, but if it is with an A, it's like hang on, let me double check because I haven't I can't remember what the spelling is. Oh it is. Yeah, Thewless, I think is it's correct. Thewless, okay. Thewless. Sounds like kind of there. Uh yeah. He's, so good as John B. Like you know, I I literally grew up with this man because he was in. Oh, he's Lupin. <laughs> well, for you, for me, yeah. he's he's uh, the prince in Dragon Heart. You know. Okay. So it doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but I'm going to nod and go. Yes, I, um, if you haven't watched Dragon Heart, first of all, that breaks my heart. Second of all, please watch it. It's like it's my childhood, like <laughs> all in there, and and he's. He was an asshole. He's an asshole. <laughs> Such an asshole. Uh, and and you know, I I was like, I was so used to him being the bad guy uh, because of that. Because of that one rule, like I, I literally like. Sometimes when you're young enough, you see one person in a role, yeah. and then if they do anything you're different, you're like, it's. That's why I didn't <laughs> I didn't recognize him as Lupin at first. I was like. You look familiar. I don't know why. And then I, I looked it up who it was. And then when Dragonheart came up, I was like, excuse me, <laughs> you're... What? <laughs> so, like, just complete brain freeze. Uh, but he's brilliant as John D. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, he's, he's just... He's so good. I was so satisfied with that. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> I liked I cause I because I didn't know how the the series was was put together in terms of like like volumes and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, I liked the fact that we kind of got that it was like five episode arc, ending with um twenty four hours 
24-7. Yeah. Oh, and then you get like a little reprieve of like that literally it's literally just a one-off episode of, of the sound of the wings and then you go into the next arc mm -hmm. and being able to go back on it now i'm like oh this works very well actually in, in yeah, terms yeah, of yeah. the whole thing and now and then we've got these this like double episode um uh with 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 a thousand cats and calliope that's one of my favorites um a lot of people were very excited i literally woke up that morning and just saw neil gaiman tweeting hey wouldn't it be nice if there was an extra episode and i was like bitch what are you saying <laughs> And it was like five to eight. And I was like, I only have to wait like five more minutes in, until this drops. I can tell if there's something going to happen, it's going to happen in the next five minutes. Um, uh, so being able to just see that come in and be like, it's an hour. I've got this whole hour more content to watch. Yeah, nice. Um, Good surprise. Uh, I like to dream of a thousand cats. I feel like it, it, I think it works a lot better for people who are very more cat people. Um, uh, which I'm not entirely. Cats do make me sneeze a bit. I like oh. cats fine. Um, I but also I was never I was never particularly an animal person growing up at all. Um, the fact that I have now any version of a love for dogs is a relatively new comparative to the rest of you know my existence. Yeah. Um, thing. Um, and even then I'm still not a huge animal person. Yeah. Kind of beyond that. Um, so I, I can see how that would work. I like I can see all the things that an animal like a cat lover would love in it. Mm -hmm. Plus the voice cast is oh, bonkers. Sound um <laughs> like shut up. <laughs> that was like wait, I knew that re I recognized that voice and then Sandra. Yes. I didn't recognize Sandra's voice. I didn't realize it was her. The only person I actually recognized was Joe Lysett. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I was like, that's Joe Lysett. <laughs> <laughs> immediately and then the end of the episode came i was like georgia and david Tennant, right right i was like what excuse me <laughs> okay we had michael so. sheen in there as well i uh, just I was, yeah there were so many uh i didn't realize you james mcavoy yes uh oh my yeah. so many so many very cool people um and then obviously with calliope coming in i out loud like was like oh hello when when after Darvel came on the screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like it's fucking him. And I told you this. I have quite. I've got a bit of affinity for for Darvel now because I had the pleasure of, of working on the same set with him for yes. about a week or in a couple of days um, uh, last year. And he's one of the loveliest human beings in the world. Um, but he's just as the sweet as you'd think he would be. Um, yeah. Uh, which makes me a little bit sad when he plays bad guys, but like, you know. <laughs> Um, he's he's fucking great in this though. Um, it truly is. Um, as is everybody. The That's the overarching theme. That's Everybody's fine. amazing. Everyone is amazing. <laughs> Did you yeah. know that nothing starts with N and ends with G? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It sure does. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face for it. Wait. I can see you like building yourself up to it. Go on then. Okay. Did you know? And they don't make 12 inch rulers any longer <laughs> my autistic fucking brain is just like no of course not because otherwise it wouldn't be a 12 inch fucking ruler would it <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so good i found these two guys on on uh tiktok and they literally say it with with a straight face and I just can hold it. <laughs> just... I love that joke. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm done. Anyway, those were my favorites. Um, yes. I feel like we should wrap up because I feel like we've gone over all the stuff that's been wonderful yes. about it. I just want to give a quick shout out to the Wizard Duel because um, we talked oh, yeah, about yeah. Gwendolyn Christie, but fuck, it rules. Every it's time I so watch good. it again, I'm like, it's great. It is great. <laughs> all fights course, should be Wizard Duels now. <laughs> of course, the end is hope. Even the devil can't deny that she feels hope. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yes. It's always hope. Always, always. As Brett said it as well. Oh, also, actually, real quick, want to mention 
I was really unsure about the change of John to Joanna Constantine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I love John Constantine yes. as a character. Yes. Uh, it's one of the only sets of comics I've ever like actively bought uh, mm-hmm. are Hellblazer ones. I have uh, I have um uh the Family Man, which I funnily enough didn't get that reference in the show until somebody pointed it. I so afterwards I was like, oh fuck, I'm an idiot. <laughs> but I have um I have the Family Man and Dangerous Habits. Nice. Um, because the Dangerous Habits is a classic. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but uh, so I re- I wasn't sure, and also because I am not the biggest fan of Clara in Doctor Who. Um, but I think this really 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 proved to me um personally um that that was because of the writing and nothing to do with jenna coleman who is fucking brilliant in this yeah i really really liked it i was quite surprised at how much i enjoyed um mm. uh the, the whole thing because i i'm I, I was of a mind about gender swapping and then i found out that joanna constantine was actually kind of a character in and of herself she was she was an ancestor of john constantine's yeah. and they've just kind of modernized her and also kept the the old version of her um and i was like okay that's fair i can kind of see what you're doing with this um and maybe feel a little bit better because i'm I'm still I, I go back and forth on the whole gender swapping thing because it's like yes in some ways I'm, i don't mind it and in other places where it's like, like well also you could just mm. get more female characters yeah. um but I think actually part of what part of the what this show does very well is that it, it does do gender swaps in mm. some places that work spectacularly. Yeah, yeah, Lucien, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I really like the, that episode three. I was like, I would watch a Joanna Constantine show um, <laughs> if they wanted I'm, to do that. I'd watch that. <laughs> I'm not sure I would watch a you know uh, a show like a separate one, but uh, she's me. I would I mean, at least I would watch more of her. Yeah. I would like for I her th- to pop up more. Um, yeah, I can. I, re- I can get on board with that. She, I think she was. Yeah, I really, 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 really liked her in it. I also um, like and I was you, you say Constantine as it should be. Well, yeah, because I. Mine. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, is this the whole thing? Yeah, that's the whole thing. Like Neil had to uh, tweet it out because everyone was like, "That's Constantine." No, I, it was no, it was always Constantine because it reminds me. Of mine. So I, because my introduction to Constantine was in the Constantine series that they did on a NBC, which and they called him John Constantine in that because obviously they're Americans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, even if he isn't, um, uh, a show that really deserved way more than it got mm. i'm still annoyed about it it's been what seven years <laughs> since uh it was it's on been that long it's been a while um i just want to see keanu reeves as constantine again that also would be very good um I don't know I, uh, but i i love matt ryan and everything he did with with that character but i, mean, I was he's great but yeah i i really like i just really like the Reeves, uh, constant time. I still haven't watched the movie. I need to do that. <gasps> you haven't seen the movie? I, it's it's I'd like I have it added to my list on Netflix because I have a very intention to watch it, but I just haven't done it yet. Oh God, I, we talked about it when Pagan was on. One of I, the best I fucking Lucifer's. Uh, <laughs> Peter Stormer. It's like do you know what's really funny. Well, not really funny. It's just something that has been one of those things that like ags on me a little bit. Is that I keep seeing those posts like um it's showing Tilda Swinton's Lucifer and, and Gwendolyn Christie's Lucifer being like, oh man, androgynous angels gotta be one of my favorite genders. And I'm sitting there like, you do realize that's the same character, right? Like it's the same character. <laughs> like to be regardless, it's it's not like a different version of the same character. It's literally the same character. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean like you, you, you do get that, right? <laughs> I, I don't know what was it. I, I think it was. I think, uh, because, you know, obviously, he shows up in the end, uh, in the movie, and it's it's by the fantastic Peter Stormer, and I don't know what was it, but he was just like so fucking charismatic, <laughs> and just, you know, I just wanted to be friends with the devil, literally, <laughs> like. <laughs> so- in this moment, yes, I may be realizing something. Who, what? <laughs> who? Who does Tilda Swinton play in the constant? Tilda Swinton plays Gabriel. I have been thinking she's 
Lucifer. No, Lucifer is Peter Stormare. I was like, so I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, and you could ignore everything I said in the past five minutes. <laughs> That's why I was like, sure. yeah, I'm dumb. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm stupid. No, uh, you're all not. Of those people are actually correct uh, and fine, and I have to stop making that comment. <laughs> God. <laughs> It's this okay. is what happens because I haven't seen the movie and I made assumptions and, and I've made it I have made I've I've made an ass of myself. That's fine. Ancient everybody. That is fine. Uh but yeah. Oops. Definitely. Me a call for that. <laughs> definitely catch up on it. Just for Peter Stormer. I swear to God, that scene is one of my favorite scenes in any movie. Like he's just so good in it. So fucking good, and the whole conversation they have with with Constantine in there, I'm like, yes. <laughs> also, I think it's one of Keanu Reeves's best best roles. I I will stand by. All them. right, I will stand by them. Uh, but yes, it's it's the same Constantine. Uh, yes, that we I knew that I knew. Yeah. Um, Just it's, so it's the know. angel part that I'm I'm, I'm I'm really really missed the mark on. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. That's, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think we we the, the, yeah. Let's do the rating stuff. How would you rate the Sandman? <laughs> Am I being hyperbolic if I actually do give it a ten out of ten? I don't know. I, I want to though. Yeah. <laughs> ten. It's a ten. I love it. I love it so. It's like it's it's been a while, been a while since um I have been able to like genuinely adore something this much mm -hmm. um it feels like for me anyway and it feels nice to be able to have that again um yeah i love it 10 out of 10 give me more i'll easy. watch it easy peasy it's a 10 it's a 10 oh, like you know as someone who loved the comics from a young age i'm very very satisfied like i was afraid of it i think i, I even told you when the first teaser came out i was like oh you know, it's very easy to mess this one up because it's just so fucking good in the comics. And then I was proven wrong. For anybody who's interested, I would I highly recommend going to find any interview of Tom Storage talking about the idea, the concept of them adapting the Sandman into a movie because he gets very, very annoyed about the idea. And it's Fair very funny. Song. It's very funny. Um, and you, it, it's just one of the things I like about this whole cast is that they really understand. Oh, I feel like what, real quick, I want to give a special shout out to Kirby Howell Baptiste as Death because yeah. she got a lot of shit for her casting and she doesn't deserve it because she's fucking brilliant. Oh yeah, she is. That's all. <laughs> she is fucking brilliant. Uh, and don't gatekeep <laughs> Sandman, you know. Yeah. There's no reason. I'm here. Right? As, I am, yeah, I'm as, younger than the, this. This this series. Um, it's been out for longer than I've been alive, uh, and I'm just coming to it now, and I'm really enjoying it, and I'm getting things out of it that um, I could have. I don't think I would have. You know, I like to think that certain things come into um, your life, like uh, stories specifically, mm -hmm. come to you at the time that I think they when when they resonate the most. Yeah. That's that's the time you should be have them, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's nice to be able to. I think this came. If I had this earlier, I don't know if I wouldn't. I would not have gotten the same things out of it as I do oh, now, as yeah. who I am today. Exactly. exactly. That kind of thing. Uh, you know, because and and what's the point in gatekeeping? I never understood it. I, it's I I I'm always happy if someone enjoys the same things that I do. It doesn't matter how long I like them or. The other person, like, who the fuck cares? Like, as long as we like it and we can talk about it, I'm good. I'm happy. Why the fuck not? Uh, this was us. We will be back in two weeks' time. Don't forget that, please. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Oh, we'll fucking figure it out. We'll figure it out. We always figure something out. It's, it might be a review. It might be an interview. You never know. Um, yeah. Open invitation to literally anybody involved in the Sandman to come talk to us. Yes, I think just it's, putting it out there. It's just easier <laughs> if I just message them at this point. It's true. I just wanted to say it. Fact. fact. So it's on the internet, Neil. Oh my god, I tried Neil. You know <laughs> I did. I I worked so hard and and it, it looked like that we couldn't get Neil and then. Yeah, it was anyway, in the end, we gotta wrap up because uh, I have to go to dinner. <laughs> yes. Katie needs to eat, so we're gonna. Let I need her to go. eat. Yeah. 
uh take care you all don't forget to subscribe and like yeah, us and share uh, your thoughts tell uh people don't harass anybody but if you, if you fancy tweeting on our behalf it would be lovely <laughs> be so nice we are lovely uh and we love you all bye goodbye